guys. Joanne Jennings is working on the side field. Did he have any issues? Is he dealing He's with any? Tightness. He can I'm sorry, what? Tightness. Okay. It's going to be a over the same boat. Okay. What's the thought process behind that last drill that you guys do? 11 on 11, no helmets. Just trying to ease them into that. Um, something that I never wanted to do. Um, we did it last year to have them ease into going slower. We'll eventually put those helmets on those and they'll bust their face up. Just making sure guys learn how to use their hands. So when you're, when you're evaluating quarterbacks and how they handle the gaze, are you judging off of timing, accuracy, footwork? What, what are you really looking at? Um, timing, accuracy, where the ball should go, what play they have, um, who makes the consistent right play the most, um, who plays the most realistically that gives you a chance to win. How does how does uh, and Sam do for the most part? And they've had two days. I thought they've been doing a great job. You know, we're just putting our base stuff in on offense and defense, and um, that's been doing really good days for him. Has Trey been getting all the first few snaps? Um, I think he did for today and yesterday. Um, so far, I guess. Is but there a meaning in that? Or? No, it'll, it'll even out. We'll make sure to get that right. Veterans have different ideas of whether they you know, should be here and work at OT. And the first team is kind of funny because there's no line out there, and um, most of our receivers are second and third team. First team today, so I'm curious what everyone thinks first and second and third team. Is. <laughs> the first snap. <laughs> the snap that we see. Oh, the snap, yeah, he was out the first snap. The veterans have different ideas whether they should be out here or not. You guys, I'm sure, don't mind as long as they're taking care of their business away from here. But when you have a guy like McCaffrey who's out there setting a pretty torrid pace for, a, for an OTA, it appeared, what does that do for the rest of the team? Um, I mean, not just um, Christian, but I mean, the majority of our players. Uh, that's been rare that we have had guys miss, so I think we do as good at that as most teams. Um, but yeah, it's huge. It's, it's a voluntary thing, so you sit there and you, I mean, it is what it is, but I think it's really hard to practice football compared to other sports. Um, we got a lot of rules that don't allow you to practice football, um, so it's very good if guys can prepare to practice so they got a chance to get better, and um, it's cool all the guys who try to work at that. Kyle, you guys have referenced with Trey in the, in the past that that finger injury kind of how it slowed his development a little bit. Where is he now in terms of being, you know, kind of far away, from, removed from that? And how much did it impact his first couple of years? I think it impacted him a ton because he had to adjust it during the season just to be able to get through and adjust how, you know, he was healthy, but it didn't heal healthy. Um, so he had to change how he played in the middle of the year um, while mainly taking scout team reps and being prepared as a number two except for a couple of games. Um, so going to go into the offseason and have to recorrect that. I think it took him all offseason. Um, so he worked at recorrecting that throughout the whole offseason. And then he was just thrown into practice with us um, going into this year. That was corrected um, throughout last year, his grip and everything. And um, so I thought he had to go in this time, with his time away, just he knew what he had to focus on. He, he had known what he had struggled with. He had known what he had done good with. He'd been to see two different quarterbacks playing our offense two different ways. And I just think his time away, it was a lot more deliberate and in a position where he knew what he could isolate on, which I think helped him compared to last year. So that was an ongoing thing even up to like week one of last season? Uh, where he was kind of working to correct it? No, I think when you spend four months trying to recorrect, I mean, everything's about muscle memory and stuff and how you develop things through repetition. And when you throw a certain way for an entire football season, adjusting because of how a finger feels, that becomes your muscle memory. It takes a while to correct that. Um, you got to work and isolate on just that for a long time. And, there's a lot of other stuff you need to isolate on besides that, um, which allows you not to do that other stuff. So I think he spent most of his time working on a grip and things like that, trying to get it back, which um, is usually a prerequisite, but because of his circumstances, he got in that. Um, so he was just late to working on other things. This year, he went into this offseason knowing exactly just football-wise what he had to work on, and I think that's why he's ahead of last year. Does he have to carry himself to do differently inside the building as opposed to last year where he was the starter Trey's been the same guy this offseason he was last offseason. Um, Trey is a very special person that I don't think has to try to act anyway. I think guys have the respect of Trey, whether he played any other position, whether he was the one, two, or the three. Um, yeah, obviously when you're the number one quarterback, you've done it and had experience, that carries more weight. But um, also when you're number one quarterback and you haven't played, that stuff still isn't real until you go out there and do it. It's, that's all just outside perception. So. Trey's been the same since he's been here. The guys respect the hell out of him. Um, and looking forward.
continue to do that. Did, did the, the finger issue have a domino effect where, you know, it affected his arm to the point where it wasn't a natural motion anymore, and, and that's maybe where some of the fatigue or soreness yeah, came into all, play? Yeah, uh, everything. Being, it was a hip that bothered that relieved everything. So, I mean, throwing motion is your whole body is connected from the ground up, similar to golf swing. So anything that gets thrown off, it can definitely adjust you. I mean, adjust things, and when you overcompensate it, whatever it is, watch any quarterback throughout the year, um, that's when things start to hurt, and then you got to go back and recalibrate it. Kyle, is this the strongest quarterback room you've had since being the coach of 49ers? Um, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to compare it to other years, but I mean, we got three guys, we got two guys who are talented enough to be taken in the top five of the draft, and we have another guy who um, played like it last year, so uh, I like the three guys we got, and I've always been a fan of Brandon Allen, um, just watching him throughout his career, and to be able to get him in here also, I feel real fortunate with our four. How's Brock Purdy doing on his recovery? Oh, he's doing good, still staying the same. On progress, on, or yeah. on schedule? Yeah, on schedule. Will he, will he begin that throwing program here in the next week or so? Yeah, he's, I think he's allowed to throw sometime next week. Does Arnold have like a, a veteran presence? He's still young, or is he kind of a younger quarterback still? Um, I mean, I met Sam just when he came out of college, just interviewing him in Indy. Um, he's, then he seemed like he had a veteran presence. Mm -hmm. Just the way he carries himself, I think, whether he's in the football building or whoever his peers are off the field. Um, and he seems almost like the same guy I met four years ago. So he is a little bit more of a veteran being in a couple places, but. Sam's come in here with, to me, being the same guy he's always been. That's why he's had such a good reputation. And uh, he's come in here acting like he's learning everything from scratch, which he is, and trying to act like a rookie in that way because it is all new to him. He doesn't want to make any assumptions. And he's been awesome in phase one and phase two of trying to just do techniques he's not used to and things like that. And it's been cool that he put the work in in those two phases that uh, he's been able to use some of it here in these last two practices. When you were looking at him at a call, he, he was a mobile kind of quarterback. I guess. He's not, you know, not running around like crazy. Is that a big feature and what you like about him now? Can you get some of that in him this season? Yeah, I mean, that all happens usually with reactions and stuff. I mean, there's two types of mobile quarterbacks. I mean, is it a type that you try to design runs for? Or is there a type who's got the athletic ability or just knack for making some off-schedule plays? And um, I mean, that, um, his knack for off-schedule plays has always been good. Um, when something's not there and he feels space in the pocket and he doesn't hesitate to run, uh, he's been able to do it very well. Um, you know, that's usually a bonus. I mean, you, you want that anytime you have that. I mean, Josh is going to be very good at the quarterback position, too. And um, Sam bringing that element is something that it helps a lot of stuff, as long as he doesn't miss other elements with it. And, and that's something you saw with Brock a, a good amount last year when he came in. I mean, people want to think of Brock as a runner, but he is quick, he is athletic in the pocket, and he makes plays very similar to the way Sam does scrambling. And um, so we see in Sam, too. Kyle, the road. It's a moving target, but both you and John have mentioned training camp with Brock. Does that mean it's conceivable he could be ready at the start of training camp? Yeah, it's, it's not really a moving target. It's that only God knows, and it's all estimates. So it depends on what quote people have got from me. But I mean, we're hoping for week one, and we feel pretty optimistic about that. Um, that's what we're hoping for. He'll be ready to play in week one. And, um, usually, that doesn't mean that's the day he comes back. Usually, you got to come before that to make that goal, and that's kind of the goal we're hoping for. And don't have any reason to think different. Yeah, you're, missing, uh, excuse me, you're missing a few guys out there. Sorry, uh, but are you generally pleased with the level of participation and energy today? Oh yeah, I'm real pleased with it. I mean, it's always different. I mean, it's always different for O line and D line because just the way it is now, um, it's hard for us to set up for those guys to get as much. Um, so it is more of a passing deal and skill position type thing. Um, but for the most part, I mean, I think we have five guys not here, so um, I, mean, I want it to be 100%, but pretty realistic with that. And I mean, I'll take five. Of the guys that aren't here, are all of them expected? Were you expecting them not to be here? Yeah, I communicate with all of them, so I've got a pretty good idea. Yeah, well, what was your thoughts today when you kick off rule this past today? Um, I mean, probably the same as all the other special teams coach. I mean, when you don't have experience of it, you don't know which way it's going to go. Um, I think point is for probably to eliminate more kick costs and stuff, which is for safety. So if that's the case, then I think they're one for that. But, you know, just not sure that it is. So we'll have to see how it plays out now and how it goes and how we adjust to it. But um, that's the rule now. So now we'll start trying to make estimates about what our philosophies will be. But any philosophy will be developed through the experience of watching how it works out throughout the year.
You said at the um, Take three more. you said at the Dwight Clark event that uh, Brock was working out with a towel. Can you explain what what exactly he's doing with the towel to sort of mimic the the throwing motion? Yeah, just I mean everything that we work on when it comes for the NFL guys throwing is, is usually from the ground up and how to time their feet, their drops, their eyes, and everything. Um, I rarely even look at where the ball goes <laughs> because you just expect it to be there. And these are NFL quarterbacks, so. It's tough when you, you can't pick up the weight of a ball and throw because your elbow has to work at everything else. And um, Brock's healthy in every other aspect. And he can't move his arm. We just don't want to put that weight on him. So for Brock to still be able to do his drops, all his footwork and stuff, you want to be able to simulate a throwing motion. And that's hard with nothing in your arms. So he uses a towel instead. And um, that's what a lot of quarterbacks do. And you try to throw every day and work on things every day, but you don't want to wear your arm down. So sometimes you use a towel, sometimes you use a football. And Brock's just in a situation where he only can you also mentioned at the Dwight Clark Legacy event that Trey Lance had cleaned up his base a little bit when he throw. Could you explain a little bit what that means? Uh, it means play with your feet wider apart, always be in a position to throw. When you're a quarterback, your feet aren't together. Um, when you turn into a runner, your feet are together and you look to run. But then it takes you a second and a half to throw where defenders can tee off on and things like that. And um, It's about always being in, having to be in a certain position to throw in. Um, so when the whole line is bad, you're not one of those guys who's just going to get sacked every time the whole line's bad. Uh, you know how to get rid of the ball, or you know how to turn into a runner and go. And that has to do with how you balance your feet out, how far you keep them apart, and how you can progress in the pocket. Kyle, any newcomers stand out in particular to you today? Not really. It's just two days. So, I mean, even if they did, I make sure I don't even say anything to the coaches because I've coached too much to, to get very excited about guys on day one and not feel the same way on day three and, and vice versa. So. It's early out there, and it's what OTAs is like for the most part, but we'll have a better idea as we get towards the end of this, and then that's the best part, because you get away for 40 days, and I've also learned to not make any concrete decisions, because um, you get away for 40 days, and you come back, and that's when you really see uh, who got better or worse, and who's really gonna make a play for this team. All right, appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks.